Hello, and welcome to Soothing Pods Sleep Stories. My name is Arif, and tonight I will be your guide as we journey to ancient Greece to spend some time with Hypnos, the god of sleep. We will travel through sleepy, cozy meadows full of wildflowers and lays next to winding rivers as we get to know the benevolent, loving god that Hypnos is. Before we begin, however, let us take a moment to relax and find comfort in the space that we are in, here and now. Close your eyes and allow your body to sink into the mattress beneath you. Here and now, there are no obligations, there is no to-do list. By simply lying in bed with your eyes closed, you are already giving your body nourishing rest, and it certainly appreciates it. With your eyes still closed, and your body sinking deeper and deeper still into the mattress. I'd like you to try and imagine a soft, warm orange glow outside your window. In your mind, can you see the light illuminating things around it? Do you see the trees, or street lights, or gardens illuminated by this soft light? It might seem out of place here in the middle of the night, but it is comforting and peaceful. Watch as the orange light grows and grows shining even brighter beyond the glass window panes, until finally the orange light comes into view. Through the glass you can see it shimmering and shining in all of its glory. It isn't a flashlight or a street light. It is a floating orange orb, reflecting the colors of the sunset for your room and the neighborhood around you. It flickers almost like it's a flame on a candle, casting a mosaic of rust, tangerine, gold, and white on the walls around you. Then, the orb taps against your window. It is a hollow, comforting tap, tap against the glass, a patient courtesy knock, asking for your permission to slip into the room. The window slowly lifts up, and with it, a cool summer night's breeze whisks into the room. On the breeze, you can smell sleepy scents from far away, lavender from distant fields, pines from forests that pepper snow-capped mountains, briny ocean waves that lap up on the white sand beaches. The scent allows you to breathe more deeply, bringing you closer and closer to a night of restful sleep. As the orb glides ever so slowly into the room, you feel a wave of comforting warmth come with it. In the warmth, 
you feel your muscles relax just a tad more. And as the orb nears your body, hovering over your head, you notice something rather miraculous. The orb is drifting down toward you, like a leaf drifting in the breeze on a warm summer day. It lowers down and down until it brushes against your forehead. It feels like a concentrated kiss from the sun and seconds after it brushes your forehead, it spreads like a wave, washing over your eyes, your nose, your jaw. You feel your tongue relax and your teeth unclench, relieving any tension that you've been carrying there. And Perhaps even more importantly, you feel as the warmth spreads through your mind, calming any racing thoughts or anxieties that may be ruminating there. It unwinds your challenging thoughts and feelings like they are a tangled ball of yarn leaving you with a manageable pile of soft, fluffy yarn in their place. You follow this warmth as it spreads down your neck and your chest. That comforting wave moves over your lungs allowing you to slowly breathe in more and more of that nourishing air. Right beside it, you feel the warmth wash over your heart, slowing its beating to a healthy, sleepy pace. With each beat in your chest, you can feel your body embracing the tranquility that it brings. The warmth spreads down to your arms, wrists, and hands. Your muscles are released of any tension they are carrying and fall deeper into the mattress, inching toward total and complete relaxation. Your fingers uncurl, any aches or pains you have there melt away like they were never there in the first place. Then, the warmth continues down through your stomach, assuaging any discomfort or pressure you may have there and in the rest of your torso. As it glides down to your legs, you feel the muscles there uncoil and unfurl, making any aches or pains disappear with it. Ever so slowly, that candlelit orb lifts into the sky. You watch in awe as it drifts toward the window, meandering as it makes its way through the room. When it slips out the window, it seems to flicker a bit brighter as if to say goodbye. As the window closes, you're able to embrace one last gust of that fragrant summer air. And then all is calm. 
Now that we have taken the time to relax and find comfort in the place that we are in, here and now, let us begin our story. The world just beyond your window is calm. It seems as though everyone in the world is asleep, drifting in soft dreams about flying in the cool breeze, gliding over the impossibly beautiful worlds. You sit up in your bed, feeling the comfortable blankets crumble down to the mattress around you. But as they do, you notice something rather strange tumble out of the blankets. In the silvery light bleeding in through the window, you can't quite make out what it is. But as you lean closer, stepping onto the cool hardwood floor next to your slippers, you see exactly what it is. It's a bright orange poppy. Even in this slight darkness, the delicate orange petals seem to glow as if the sun itself has dripped into the fragrant blossom. You lean down taking the poppy by the stem in your fingertips. You're surprised at first by how soft and dainty it is. A flower that can somehow withstand and thrive in the wild temperatures of deserts and chaparral hills. The moonlight bleeds through the petals, illuminating them with an even more stunning glow. And then, you notice something attached to the bottom of the stem. It's a tiny roll of jet black paper, tied together by a silver silk ribbon. You undo the silk ribbon, feeling the luxurious softness against the tips of your fingers. The paper is thick, almost as if it's been handmade. When you unfurl the little note, you find a message written to you in silver ink that pops against the black paper. The message reads, I sense you could use some time with me. Please visit. At the very bottom, in a flowery, intricate font, the signature reads, Hypnos. You brush your fingers over the name for a minute, soaking it in. Hypnos, the god of sleep, the personification of sleep itself. There are few myths about him, but what is known is that he was a kind, benevolent god who helped those who were struggling to fall asleep. He brought them peace, comfort, and rejuvenation, easing them into a full night of sleep with his many gifts and the nature he had at his disposal. You're eager to meet him, to hear what he has to say, to feel the warmth and comfort 
of his soothing gaze as he welcomes you in for the night. And yet, you are unsure of where to go. The note gives no directions or instructions. But just as you flip it over, you hear something tap against your window. You look up to see a firefly resting on the glass. It is not an ordinary firefly. Its glow is not that miraculous yellow-green color that reminds you of warm summer days. It is something else entirely. The glow isn't just one color, it's several. It cycles through beautiful shades of red, pink, purple, white, green, and blue. Like a living rainbow, a mosaic of the world's shades, it flickers from one to the next seamlessly, casting a magical aura around it. You watch the firefly in awe for a few moments, until it begins to tap on the window again. It drifts toward the street outside, urging you to follow it. You duck the poppy in the front pocket of your shirt and slide on some slippers before you inch out of the house. The minute you open the door, you are met with a miraculous aroma. It is the night air at its finest, bright and invigorating and oh so fresh. You smell the whole bouquet of nature around you. The scent of the pine trees seems even stronger. The scent of the fresh, dewy grass is bright and almost citrusy. You can smell the coolness in the air, a sharp, invigorating feeling that fills you with comfort and assures you that you have made the right decision. The firefly does a little circle before you, like a dog doing a happy dance when it discovers you've arrived home. A smile creeps onto your face as you follow the firefly, following its lead. It floats down the middle of the completely empty street, illuminating it in that brilliant rainbow. It casts breathtaking shadows and colors across the buildings and landscapes, like a painter splashing swaths of color for no one but themselves. And though you are following the precious little firefly, it does feel like a journey you are taking alone. With the streets empty and all the lace curtains drawn in the homes around you, it feels as though you have the whole world to yourself. It is not intimidating or scary. On the contrary, it feels like a relief, like you've snuck 
into after hours of the world, and it is your time to explore, and your time alone. Your footsteps echo off the pavement as you continue to follow the little firefly. The echoes are consistent, a steady drone that is already making you sleepier and sleepier. And as you near the forest, you feel even more relaxed. The firefly breezes in through the leaves, urging you to do the same. But as soon as you enter, it becomes clear this is not an ordinary forest at all. This isn't the forest from your neighborhood. This is something much, much more. The entire forest is aglow with bioluminescent mushrooms and flowers. The mushrooms spring up from logs, the bases of trees, the blankets of moss that are laid across the forest floor, like evergreen carpets. You reach out, daring to touch one of these incredible blue mushrooms. You brush your finger across the top of one of them, only to have it spring back at you with a happy little noise, kicking bits of glowing dust into the air like a cloud of confetti. And in that cloud, a message suddenly comes to be. Welcome. Please, continue on and do not fear. Once more, it is signed by Hypnos. There is no doubt that you are going the right way. You smile to yourself and continue on, because truly, you feel at home here, at peace. With Hypnos guiding you, you know you have nothing to fear. You brush your fingers over the tops of mushrooms as you pass them, kicking that sweet-smelling dust up into the air. It glistens like glitter in the moonlight, making the forest even more beautiful than it already was. You continue on through the fields of moss and forest of pine and birch. Everything feels as though it is alive, as though it is welcoming you with open arms. The moon high overhead, illuminates everything in that magical silvery glow, and anything it doesn't touch is set aglow by the light of the firefly that is guiding your way. Then the firefly stops at the far edge of the forest there is a large stone cave, but it is unlike any stone cave you have ever seen. The sides are coated in those glowing mushrooms, and not just mushrooms, but flowers. The flowers sparkle in a stunning array of radiant colors, red, Salmon, tangerine, cornflower, sage, and cerulean. 
In the gentle breeze, they wave, almost as if they are waving to you, welcoming you to this stunning, breathtaking place. The cave seems to arch high over your head, and at the top, you notice the symbol of a poppy etched into the ancient stone. You reach into your front pocket, pulling out the flower that Hypnos entrusted you with. You give it a smell, breathing in the subtle aroma that the poppy gives off. But in that breath, you feel yourself growing a bit sleepier. The firefly confidently leads you into the cave. You push past the hanging moss as you enter, moving it aside like a curtain. The cave does not go back into the mountain that it is etched into. Rather, it sinks down into the ground at a surprising rate, going further and further down. The firefly senses your hesitation and glows a bit brighter, allowing you to see more of the cave. And on the walls, you see wonderful etchings Etchings of weddings, of travel, of lazy days in the sun, of people flying, of people going to space. It's as if every dream anyone has ever had has been recorded here. You linger by the entrance for a moment to take it all in amazed by the work that must have gone into this. Then, something rather incredible happens. One portion of the cave wall begins to glow, and slowly, slowly, some new writing comes to be in a glittery orange glow. In Hypnos's beautiful print, it reads, Do not fear, we will be united shortly. So, you don't fear. You continue on deeper into the cave. And once you've walked for several minutes, you enter into a large cavern. The cavern is aglow with dozens and dozens of torches and candles. It feels archaic in a comforting way, like you've stepped into another world. And as you look around, you realize that you have. You are now in the underworld, and though the name is intimidating, it is not a place you should be afraid of being. Many of the gods reside in the underworld, tucked away from the mundane world, or simply because it is where they thrive best. Nyx, one of the kindest of the goddesses, resides in the underworld most of the time, and her son Hypnos does the same. You continue on, following the firefly. You see four rivers laid out before you and the firefly is leading you to the first one. It is a large, 
dark river, a river that almost looks red and orange because of the sheer amount of candles around. A lone boat bobs in the water, beckoning you to hop aboard. But just before you do, you catch a whiff of something beautiful, a scent that takes your breath away. It takes you a moment to realize that it is lavender, and that you're smelling it because a bunch of pale purple flowers are floating down to you on a beautiful floating log. You lean down, plucking the lavender away from the plush moss coating the log. Just like the poppy, the lavender has a note attached. You unfurl the black paper and find yet another message written in that silver ink that pops against the inky background. Do not touch the river. It is the Lethe, the river of forgetfulness. You're thankful for the note, surprised that you hadn't thought about that earlier. One of the big rivers of the underworld, the Lethe, is a river that causes people to forget things if they so much as brush their fingertips against the icy water. But that is not the only thing that's miraculous about the Lethe. It is said to be where day and night meet, the one place where they are next to each other, connected. And it is also close to where Hypnos resides. You carefully step in the boat It lets out a creak, the kind that only an old, beat-up boat can. As you settle in, the firefly plops down on your shoulder for a rest. With it so close, you're able to feel the warmth of its tiny little body. You watch as it takes deep breaths in, recovering from its long flight. With it so close, you're able to observe the beautiful changing colors of its light even more. The boat meanders down the lazy river that laces through the underworld slowly winding around curves and bends, sailing beneath hundreds and hundreds of flickering candles. Even though you are floating atop a river of forgetfulness, you feel completely at peace. It's like you are floating down a canal on a starry night. Finally, the boat comes to a stop at a dock. The dock jets out into the water, but it is not just a dock of wood. Glowing flowers sprout from the mossy cracks, reminding you that life can be found even in places like this, even on a river of forgetfulness. But that isn't even close to the most remarkable thing about this stop. Overhead, the cavern ceiling is unlike anything you've ever seen. 
there is a line down the center of the sky, a line that looks like a watercolor painting of sunrise and sunset. There are swirls of cotton candy pink, of bright orange, of soft sunflower yellow, or a deep indigo, and swirls upon swirls of black and blue, like the colors of a dark night sky. This is the meeting place of night and day a place that Nyx, Hypnos's mother, is very familiar with, and where she spends most of her time. You think about meeting her, about discussing the wonders of nights like this. But in the distance, you spot the next most miraculous thing. There is yet another cave, only this one is more beautiful than the last, because it is absolutely coated in wildflowers. The wildflowers blanket the area around the cave leaving only a small pathway of stones for people to cut through to enter the cave. And the wildflowers are truly breathtaking, the most vivid and wonderful you've ever seen. It's also surprising, because you've never seen these flowers growing with each other. There is a peppering of poppies, sunset orange poppies, scarlet red poppies, golden yellow poppies. They add warmth to this dark space, and they are not the only ones. Lavender stretches as far as your eye can see. The thin stems reach high up into the sky, as if they're reaching out, trying their hardest to brush their fragrant petals against the stunning convergence of the sunrise and sunset. You wander through the meadow of flowers leading to the cave, and with every step, your feet brush against the petals, kicking up their fragrant, sleepy aroma into the air. You pause for a moment to admire them, to take them in, and that's when you hear a kind voice from behind you. I'm so pleased you were able to find this place. The voice is warm and smooth as honey, a deep baritone that makes you feel relaxed and at peace. You turn to look at him for the first time. Hypnos smiles at you, Though he is a remarkably beautiful god, with chiseled features and long white wings sprouting from his back, he is not intimidating. A warm energy seems to radiate from every part of him, and his smile is the kind of smile that brings you nothing but comfort. You know he has no other motives, no goals, but to help you. He takes you by the hand and sits down in the flowers with you. When you sit, you notice that there is no sound. The flowers do not have that soft brush and whoosh as they move. 
In fact, you notice that your movements produce no sound either. Hypnos notices your confusion and gives you a reassuring smile. There is no sound that reaches my grotto. It is a place of sleep and rest after all. He picks up a poppy gently in his fingertips and hands it to you with another one of his warm smiles. I suppose you are wondering why I brought you here tonight, he says. I help humans that need sleep. As the god of sleep, I do spend nearly half of your life with you. All of the time that you are asleep, I am right there beside you, welcoming you to my land. You're comforted by this, knowing that even on nights where sleep is hard to come by, there is a benevolent God there ready to calm you and receive you with open arms. Then he wants to help you and he will never abandon you, even if sleep doesn't come peacefully one night or the next. There is no hopelessness with Hypnos guiding you. Hypnos motions to the cave behind him. That is my home. My sons and I reside there. They are the bringers of dreams, and my wonderful wife, Pasithia, the goddess of relaxation and meditation. We all work together to give you humans the nourishment that your minds and souls need. Hypno smiles at you and hands you another poppy, urging you to lie down in the flowers behind you. As you do, you are surprised by how wonderfully comfortable they are. They embrace you completely, their soft petals winding around your bare skin and inviting you to fully relax and sink into the grass. Tonight, you will get all the rest that you need. You will wake up refreshed after coming here and spending this time with me. For now, just simply be. His words reach your ears like music dancing on the breeze. You breathe in the aroma of the flowers that are all around you. The smell of the lavender seems to almost sink into your skin, urging you to totally relax. The delicate poppies brush against your cheek moving back and forth in the gentle wind. The comforting repetition of these movements puts you at ease, causing a wave of calm to wash over you, embracing you tightly. It may not always be easy to come by, these restful nights of sleep, but have faith that you will find them again, that I will always come to your side and guide you to them. You are never alone in this quest for sleep, my child, and tonight you certainly are not. 
You feel your eyelids growing heavier and heavier with his kind words. His voice calms you unlike anything you've ever experienced before. It's all so relaxing. The feel of this comfort, the poppies kissing your cheek, the fragrant aroma of that beautiful purple and white lavender. Even the moss and soil below you is the softest bed you have ever felt. You open your eyes slightly as Hypnos removes a small, delicate branch from his pocket. A drop of dew glistens on the end of the branch, glistening in what little light is around you. He gives you one final smile as he explains. When I bring this drop of water to your lips, you will fall into a perfect night's sleep. Remember, I am always with you. Your lips part slightly. The icy droplet lands on your tongue. You are blanketed by sleep. Sleep that drifts over you like clouds on a summer day. The scent of the flowers disappears. The feeling of them. But one thing that doesn't disappear as you find yourself back in your bed. The feeling of comfort that Hypnos has given you. He is always there for you. And you must trust that he will come. I hope you have enjoyed this sleep story. And it has brought you a night of peaceful rest. Please, join me again tomorrow night for another sleep story. Until then, sweet dreams. <laughs>